Hi everyone, welcome to this Noddy Networker quick demonstration of the Aruba Hotspot 2 support. We're going to be using the Aruba 7005 Cloud Services Controller, an Aruba IAP 225 Access Point and an Apple iPhone 5. In this demo, we will use a simple setup to show how to configure the Aruba Hotspot 2 support in the infrastructure and we'll use a Hotspot 2 compliant device in this case an iPhone, to test the configuration and also to illustrate the typical user experience. So firstly, the software and firmware versions used in the demo. And this is our simple demo setup. We have an Aruba 7005 controller where we're going to configure a Hotspot 2 enabled VAT profile. That's going to get pushed out to the Aruba IAP225 access point which will broadcast out a hotspot to enabled SSID. We're then going to take our iPhone 5 and install a hotspot 2 profile on it, in this case TLS based. And as we bring that iPhone into the range of the access point, we'll see it automatically select and authenticate to the hotspot 2 service without any user interaction. OK, so let's start by logging into the controller. And now we're going to configure the SSID. So we're going to use the inbuilt wizard, Campus Wireless LAN. We're going to follow the wizard through here using pretty much all the defaults. We're going to create a new group. Call it Noddy. And we're going to create a new SSID. So called Noddy. Okay. And we're going to follow through the wizard. Use most of the defaults here tunnel. Give it an egress VLAN. Uh, simply one of the VLANs on our controller. Use default 802.1x authentication server. We're going to simply use the internal server. And click defaults. And we're done. So fairly straightforward. OK, so we've now configured our new AP group called Noddy and we've configured a basic 802.1x based SSID, also called Noddy. Right, so now we'll need to modify the SSID for TLS certificate based authentication. I'll just show you the internal user ID we'll be using on the phone. It's the iPhone.dark.net user. Right. So let's look at the current Noddy profile, which we need to modify. A couple of changes here. Let's go to advanced. We need to check TLS. There we go. And select a couple of certificates to use for this particular SSID and apply that config. OK, so that's our SSID set up. Now what we need to do is deploy that on our access point. So go to AP provisioning. That's our access point IAP 225. And we're going to provision that and change it from its current group into our newly formed Noddy group. Again, going to apply and reboot that AP. So when the AP reboots, we'll have our Noddy SSID uh, available, although at this stage uh, it won't be hotspot 2 enabled. 
while we wait for that we can configure the hotspot 2 profile on the iPhone 5. This is the iPhone screen and I'm going to install a hotspot 2 profile I built earlier using the Apple configurator program on a MacBook. I sent the profile via email so I'll open that up and there we go and now we can install the profile so we hit install enter the passcode and accept some certificates install those and the profile should install there we go it's all done if we open up the profile we can see more details we can see the Wi-Fi portion at the top. This is the profile itself. And we can see it's set to hotspot uh, WPA2 auto join. Yes, this is the uh, profile that will enable the iPhone to automatically connect to an appropriate hotspot 2 service. Right, a quick recap. So, so far we have configured a new group on the controller called Noddy and we provisioned our IAP 225 access point into that group. We've configured a new VAP called Noddy, uh, as yet with no Hotspot 2 profile on it, into that same group. And we've installed a Hotspot 2 profile on the iPhone. Now that profile actually specifies the use of WPA2, TLS, and it also specifies that it needs to support a specific domain called dark.net. When we turn on the iPhone wireless, we expect to see the Noddy SSID listed as a normal service. The iPhone won't attempt to automatically connect. We'll then configure and enable the Hotspot 2 profile on the Noddy VAP on the controller. At this point, we'll check that the iPhone automatically connects to the Noddy Hotspot 2 service, since both the access point and the iPhone will have corresponding Hotspot 2 profiles enabled. Then change the SSID on the Noddy VAP and confirm that the iPhone still connects even though the SSID name has changed. This is really to simulate the situation where you wander up to a location and you have no idea what SSID uh, you should be connecting to, but in fact the if it supports the right Hotspot 2 profile, then it will connect regardless of the SSID name. And finally, we'll change the domain name in the Hotspot 2 profile of the VAP and confirm that the iPhone no longer automatically associates to the service. That's because even though the iPhone has a Hotspot 2 profile and the access point is broadcasting out uh, support for Hotspot 2, the profiles don't match, so the iPhone doesn't associate to the service and carries on scanning for other connections. So with the iPhone's wireless turned on, we see the Noddy SSID, but we see that the iPhone is not automatically connecting to it. We'll turn off the Wi-Fi and now we will add the Hotspot 2 uh, profile to the VAP that we created earlier. Select Hotspot 2, add new, we're going to call it Noddy, oops, Noddy, enable the Hotspot 2 compatibility, and just check that the Access Network Query Protocol is selected, and then we apply that profile. We're now going to add Advertisement profile, again, new profile, call that one Noddy, apply, and we'll use all of the defaults, except we're going to change the domain name, and this needs to be changed to match that that we put in on the iPhone profile, add a profile Noddy, Okay, apply, and 
to the domain name, which is dark.net. And we apply that. So just a couple of changes there, fairly straightforward. So let's turn on the Wi-Fi on the iPhone. And this time we should see the iPhone identify the Noddy service using the Hotspot 2 support and automatically connect uh, to that service. And there we go. The iPhone has used its configured Hotspot 2 profile in conjunction with the AP's Hotspot 2 functionality to automatically identify and connect to a service it's never previously used. OK, let's turn off the Wi-Fi. Now let's make a small change to the Noddy service. We're going to change the SSID from Noddy to something else. Let's call it Big Ears. We apply. So the hotspot profile is exactly the same. All we've done is change the SSID of the service that will be broadcast out. We'll turn on the Wi-Fi on the iPhone again. It's going to scan. And this time we see it finds big ears as the SSID. But because the hotspot profile still matches, it's going to automatically connect. So even though it's never seen this SSID before, it's quite happy to connect because through the Hotspot 2 support, it's going to confirm that that's a viable connection and automatically connect. OK, so let's turn off the Wi-Fi again. Make one more change to our Noddy app. This time, we'll look at the Hotspot 2 profile and we're going to change the domain name advertised by the Hotspot 2 profile. We'll change it to something else like junk. We'll apply that. Again, we'll turn on the iPhone's Wi-Fi. Again, we scan. It sees the Big Ears SSID. But this time, the information advertised doesn't match the configured profile on the iPhone, and it doesn't attempt to automatically connect. And that's the end of this Hotspot 2 quick demo. We've seen the Aruba Hotspot 2 support in action, and we've seen the user experience from a typical Hotspot 2 client device perspective. Thank you for listening to the Noddy Networker. Hope you enjoyed the demo. Bye for now.